Hi parents, welcome to week two of our summer classes. Uh, again, my name is Steve. I'm the executive director of Imagination Theater. Demi is our artistic director, as well as one of our teachers for the preschool, the second grade classrooms. We're just gonna spend a quick 10 minutes with you tonight uh, to talk about what the kids have been doing in class during week two. And um, also to uh, uh, give you an idea of how you could expand on those activities at home. Um, and then finally, uh, Demi will do a quick self-care uh, meditation uh, exercise with all of us and then we'll be done. So Demi, do you want to kind of talk about like what the kids have been doing so far this week and, uh, and what they've been up to? Yes, I'd love to. So for the pre-K through second graders, the younger group, we had a pajama party last week. It was really fun. We also brought a stuffed animal and got to show off the stuffed animal and also explored a little bit using our voices. So saying hello and goodbye as our stuffed animal and giving, giving the animal or toy a sound or a voice. We also pretended we were at a pajama party and then that game is called Snapshots. It's really cute. And then we had a freeze dance party, which was really, very fun and then they said they wanted to do it next week i asked them i said do you guys want to do this next week and they said yeah so the freeze dancing is cute there's different um there's different variations this week we did animal freeze dance so every time the instruction comes after a freeze it's to act like a certain animal so we waddled like penguins and stomped like elephants and just kind of explored moving around in our bodies which is uh, very easy to do for that age. They're very willing and, and, and um, excited. Then the older students, they also did some voice exploration. They did some mirroring activities, which the younger students and I did last week. So one person leads and then everybody follows from the screen. We started off physical and then started adding faces and emotions and both workshops tie in emotional, social emotional learning. So we talk about how we're feeling. We do a quick check in with our thumbs of if we're feeling great, just okay or not so great. We validate all emotions. We talk about understanding ourselves throughout. And the last thing that the older students did was they had an object that they got to create stories around. And actually Steve is gonna explain a little bit more about storytelling. Yeah, so just to expand on, um, you know, one of the things that we try to teach them, especially with acting or um, theater classes is how to tell a story and what a story consists of. So like it has to have obviously a beginning, a middle and an end. We usually get to a heightened part of the story and then kind of uh, resolve it in some way, shape or form. Um, and so all of the kids in, certain capacities we're working on that this week. Um, there's a couple of quick exercises I'm just going to give you as an example that you can do. It's, they're fairly easy at home to teach that story structure and um, also our great acting exercises so that you can add on to them. So first of all, even just for little kids, teaching them how to tell a story with the beginning, middle, and end. Sometimes we start with an emotion and I'll give them a sentence like the time I was most fill in this emotion here uh, was blank. So like the time I was the most excited was the time that I got to finally ride a roller coaster at an amusement park. And then I'll say, okay, tell me about that story. And we'll, and I'll get to try to get them to elaborate more on the story as they tell it. So instead of just that one sentence, I was excited when I was on the roller coaster, we might say, okay, what, what kind of day was it? Was it like a sunny day? Was it summer? What was, you know, so we can get the whole essence of the story and fill in all of the details. I'll do that with the older students as well. Sometimes I'll have them pair up and as an acting exercise, the person who's telling the story, um, or I should say the person who's listening to the person tell the story. So if I'm the listener and Demi's telling me a story, I, she'll tell the whole story beginning to end and then I can ask Demi questions about things that I'd like her to fill in on. Um, some things that maybe like I was just explaining, like what kind of day was it? What time of year was it? Um, you know, who were you with? Were you with your friends or your family? Um, you know, those kinds of things. And as she's telling the story, it's my job to watch her as she tells it. Because what I'm going to do then is retell the story, um, not as me, but as Demi. So I will then take on Demi's personality and characteristics and traits, and I will retell it. 
as the actor because one of the things that we have to do as actors is observe other people and how they move and how they behave and how they talk and then um we can retell that story using our body and our voices just like the kids were practicing with uh this week with an object and one last quick fun game that's an improv game that you could do uh, probably with older rather than younger is um <clears throat> a game where it's called i don't remember the name of it it's like timed or something if i don't remember what it is but you you have them tell the story but you give them a time limit for it so you say you have three minutes to tell me a story about blank they start telling the story and then you see if they can retell the story in a minute and then retell the same story in 30 seconds and then retell the same story in only five seconds so they have to learn how to hit the important parts of the story the, the, mm -hmm. the lesser and lesser the time comes through. So three minutes there probably feels like an eternity and they're elaborating and going on and on and on. Minute is a little shorter than 30 seconds. Five seconds, I, I can only have a chance to stress two main things in the story. And it's a fun exercise that kind of gets them to think about what's important in the story and what the, the highlights are and what and how a story is created and how it's made. So those are just a couple of other activities that um, you can play at home. Uh, and there are things that I do in acting classes all the time that are really helpful for not only teaching story structure, but also teaching how uh, we use our bodies and voices to tell stories. Cool. So now that we gave you a couple of ideas, uh, Demi is going to lead us through our own self-care for tonight. What are we doing, Demi? Today we're going to start with a quick body scan. So if you're new to breathing exercises or meditation, it's totally fine. All, all different experience levels are welcome. All you need to do is sit up nice and tall. So if you're laying down, that's also fine. If you're in a seat, just find a nice tall spine and then relax your shoulders down your back. If it feels good to take a couple shoulder shrugs, go ahead and do so. Make sure that you're comfortable. And as you sit, notice if it's comfortable to close your eyes even. And if not, just stare at something that's not moving. And as you start to breathe, without changing anything, just simply notice the breath moving in and out of your body. Sitting up nice and tall, breathing in, filling up and exhaling out, emptying your lungs, letting go. Standing here in stillness, Noticing what's going on in our mind. And let's bring our attention right to the crown of our head, sitting up nice and tall and relaxing the, the skin on our foreheads, softening the muscles around your eyes, relaxing through your jaw, maybe separating both rows of teeth softening through your shoulders, bringing the attention to your chest, and then down through your torso into your belly. Just simply noticing. When we breathe, we have the attention to notice what's really going on physically as well as mentally. So as we scan our physical body, Come back to the mind and notice what's going on in your mind today. Any emotions that you might be having, any way that you might be feeling. And again, simply noticing them without judgment, without labeling them good or bad, just simply noticing what is going on. And that acknowledgement without judgment creates awareness. Emotions are like tunnels. You have to go through them to get to the other side. So instead of avoiding our emotions, we try to navigate through the emotion to let it pass so that we can find a little bit of peace. And I'll leave you with a quick story. A herd of buffalo, when a storm comes, 
they don't navigate around the storm. They actually move right into the eye of the storm. The reason they do that is because the quickest way to get through the storm is to go through it. So instead of navigating around the storm, going through the storm is the quickest, most efficient way to pass. Take one more deep breath here. Breathe in, long inhale, and big breath out. Blink open your eyes, and then just find a little bit of gratitude for taking just a couple minutes for you. Well deserved, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys. Thank you, Demi. You're so welcome. That's, that's our session for this week. Um, we hope that you are finding these helpful. Um, we'd love to hear from you if you are. Uh, also, just a quick reminder that this week um, with the Zoom link, I had sent out a, um, a link to a Google form to get some permission uh, if you would be willing for us to be able to use clips of the Zoom classes with the kids. We are trying to promote uh, classes for our, a second session this summer, which would start immediately after the first. And we would love to be able to use um, some images or some video of just how much fun the kids are having on the Zoom platform to hopefully get other people interested. So if you don't mind uh, having us use images of your child uh, and could go on and click on that link, fill out a quick form. It just gives your name, your child's name, and yes or no, I give my permission. That would be really, really helpful. Um, thank you. We will see you next week on Thursday at seven o'clock uh, for our adult workshop. And uh, I will be emailing everyone early next week with the Zoom links for classes on Tuesday and Wednesday for our kids. And we're doing crazy hair day next week for my group for pre-K to second. Oh, good reminder. Is, is there a reminder for there's, the there's nothing specific that they need to do for the older, but the youngest students and I have a theme every week. So next week is crazy hair slash crazy hat day is an option as well if you want to put something silly on your head. Awesome. Thanks, Demi. Thank yes. you all. You're welcome. We'll see you next Bye, week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great night.